Good morning, Gene. The weather, I understand, is pretty good. Good morning, Frank. I want to say we do miss you down here, but in it's, it's an absolutely beautiful day. The skies are near clear, the uh, winds are calm, and thus far the count has proceeded uh, without a hitch, almost completely flawlessly. Well, we heard just a moment ago from Mission Control that everything seems to be going quite well, but you did have some weather problems yesterday, didn't you? They did cause some concern. Frank, we had, starting late yesterday afternoon, horrendous thunderstorms with uh, hail and uh, with lightning. Uh, we were here in a booth, and uh, believe me, we could feel a brunt of them. Well, you can see the lightning coming down there, striking. It didn't hit the uh, actual orbiter, did it, or the shuttle? Well, the lightning hit in and all around the uh, pad and the pad structure, but it did coincidentally did not hit the, uh, the lightning rod, nor, fortunately, did it hit anywhere uh, on the shuttle spacecraft itself. But there was some damage to uh, about 400 tiles, I understand? We had some tile damage, which concerned people uh, for uh, a short period of time. That About quarter-inch tile hit the control surfaces of the shuttle right in the, uh, in the rudder area, the vertical fin area, around the uh, elevons, which is a control surface, and on a leading edge of the wing. And Frank, the major concern uh, of that hail was uh, as much the ability for the, uh, the shuttle itself to control itself through reentry as it was to uh, control the heat, uh, the heat during reentry. Uh, we have uh, some tape now, Gene, of uh, the inspection team going around last night looking for uh, damage on the tiles. They worked well into the night. Uh, they flew a specialist from, uh, from Houston, and it, they had to complete by about 2 o'clock this morning so they could uh, start loading the uh, liquid oxygen and hydrogen and proceed with the count. This is, they, a, uh, this they, is a picture, Gene. I just wanted to say that we had a, apparently a close-up of one of the tiles showing just the little pockmark caused by the hail. Well, they filled those pockmarks with the adhesive, uh, the glue that they actually glue the... Uh, the tiles to the spacecraft down, and everyone appears to be very satisfied that they've done a, uh, a job that'll handle a flight. There seems to be always something new, though, doesn't there, that when it comes along just before the mission. The, there have been times when they've had to replace equipment at the last minute, and now they had to replace, uh, or not replace, but repair some of the tiles. Well, the astronauts have been on board the uh, spacecraft now for more than an hour and a half, Ken Mattingly and Henry Hartsfield. Before that, of course, it was necessary for them to get suited up. And we see them here. This is uh, Hank Hartsfield, who was making his first mission into space. He became an astronaut in 1969. He's 48 years old. And the camera moves over to Ken Mattingly, who went up into space as the uh, command module pilot of Apollo 16 10 years ago in April of 1972. The reason uh, these pictures are uh, especially significant today is because this is the last time that the astronauts will have to wear these uh, rather cumbersome space suits. The next time in November when the mission goes up, why uh, the astronauts will be in more or less shirt sleeves, as they say. The uh, man uh, just uh, in front of Ken Mattingly, you'll see him in a moment as he moves in there, is Joe Schmidt, who has been suiting up astronauts ever since astronauts have been going into space. And Vic Ratner has more about his contributions to the success of this program. Joe Schmidt has suited them all, helping every astronaut from Alan Shepard in 1961 to Mattingly and Hartsfield today get into their bulky spacesuits. And you might be surprised at all the stuff he says they carry in their pockets. Two of these uh, calculators has these little modules in here that you can put in there, but this is basically what it looks like. And down in this pocket here, we put this mini cassette uh, recorder, which we put down in here. Also up in this shoulder pocket now, we have a little flashlight that uh, will go in the center of the pocket. One of the most popular items, I guess, is the uh, Swiss Army knife, which goes in this separate little pocket here. Yeah, we have a barf bag here. In case he gets sick, he has something that he can use to... Uh, Is that what they call it? Uh, <laughs> uh, barf, they do. that's my terminology. It's called a... And in case, case the crew wants to snack a little on the launch pad, there's even a bottle of water and a sandwich neatly tucked away in a pants pocket. At least things are neatly tucked away when they go out, but not when the astronauts come back. As the shuttle goes into regular commercial operation, future crews will suit up on their own. So for Joe Schmidt, this is a last hurrah. Well, there is uh, Columbia nesting on the pad there, viewed from our cameras about a few miles away, and you see the crowds already gathered there in the VIP uh, viewing area, some uh, military brass. Gene, uh, I'd like to ask you, why will it uh, not be necessary for the astronauts to wear these uh, flight suits the next time when they go up? 
Well, Frank, uh, going out of the, uh, the test or experimental and engineering test phase as we are with the completion of uh, the fourth flight, we go in, uh, in the operational phase. We take a lot of bulky hardware and equipment off that uh, measures the performance of the spacecraft. We assume now, after this flight, that we'll know how it's going to perform. We can put more payload on, and of course, part of that payload is people. We're going to put two more people on and, uh, and actually take the ejection seats out. Uh, it wouldn't quite be fair to have uh, availability for two men to eject and not four. Uh, along with that, of course, goes our confidence in the spacecraft and uh, the confidence in the spacecraft to be able to hold uh, the, the Earth-like atmosphere that it takes for survival in space. Thank you, Gene. I think the uh, key word there is confidence in uh, the way the program is moving along. Well, we're about three minutes or so away from the uh, planned 10-minute hold, so uh, we're going to pause for just a moment now. We'll have more on the coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia in a moment. And here we are, once again, you see the picture from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral. We are only nine seconds now away from stopping the clock. Here's the voice of uh, shuttle control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 10 minutes and counting. We're just a few seconds away now from our final build-in hold at the T-minus nine minute point. The comparison of the prime computer with the onboard computer has been completed. All aero services and actuators on the orbiter are presently in the proper configuration for the auxiliary power unit to start and the hydraulic pressure to be applied. We have 30 seconds from our built-in hold at the T-minus 9-minute point. At the start of the 9-minute hold, the NASA test director will pull the various uh, test conductors to determine their readiness to proceed. The countdown clock will hold in five seconds. Three, two, one. T-minus nine minutes and holding. All right, it is a planned 10-minute build-in hold, during which time they will poll everybody and decide whether they are ready to proceed with the final nine minutes of the countdown and uh, get the bird off the ground on schedule. If they do, it will be actually be the first time that the shuttle has launched at the preordained moment because there have been delays in the past, as you'll recall. This is, after all, only the fourth flight, however. And it is the fourth and final uh, test flight because when the shuttle goes up again in November with a different crew, it will be fully operational. Nevertheless, each time there is something new added to each new mission. And Lynn Scher, who wishes she were at uh, Cape uh, Canaveral, but is instead at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, is going to tell us now just what's new about this mission. Good morning, Lynn. Well, good morning, Frank. Yes, I do wish I were there because it's a wonderful sight, but I'm perfectly happy to be here. As you know, the minute that the uh, Columbia clears the tower, all the control switches right here to the Johnson Space Center. So we'll be here to be reporting on that a little bit later on. Uh, as you mentioned, Columbia has taken this trip three times before. It's traveled more than five million miles in space. But even though NASA does want us to believe this is all going to become very routine, STS-4 does have a number of features that make it very new and very different from any of the previous flights. This is the first flight that will carry a commercial payload, the pharmaceutical processing equipment, which will be operated by the crew right up front in their quarters. This is also the first to carry experiments paid for by a private individual. That's the getaway special canister back in the payload bay. And that will be activated rather simply with a switch or two that the crew turns on. While it is on orbit, Columbia will try out a new position this trip as part of its continuing thermal tests. It will be maneuvered so that its belly faces the sun for 33 hours. And, of course, this is the first flight that will not show us what's on the other side of that belly, inside the cargo bay. That's because STS-4 is carrying the first military payload. Although the Defense Depart Department has classified it as a kind of trial run of its secrecy mach machinery, the details of what we, well, at least we think they're the details of what is called DOD-82-1 were published before the clampdown. And we believe that it's an infrared telescope that will detect enemy missiles and satellites. We also know that this is just the beginning of a growing military involvement with the space shuttle. Frank? Thank you, Led, and we'll be coming back to you uh, quite frequently through our broadcast this morning, as uh, particularly after the uh, uh, Columbia clears the pad and Houston takes over.